Hey, I'm Srini, host and founder of the Unmistakable Creative Podcast and the creator of Maximize Your Output with Men. In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started with men. Also, be sure to check out our new free How to Take Smart Notes e-course that will teach you how to take notes that help you remember what you read and use those notes for articles, books, projects, and anything you could possibly imagine. Now, let's get to the video. So when I started this YouTube channel, I published a video about what makes Mem different than other note-taking tools. That was actually my first video on this channel, and that was probably about a year ago. And my knowledge about Mem is a lot more comprehensive now, so I decided to create this video for beginners so that you could understand how to get started with Mem. The key thing that you need to understand about Mem is that Mem is very much like your brain because your brain is a network, not a hierarchy. So what do I mean by that? In most note-taking tools, you're organizing information in some sort of hierarchical structure. And the most standard structure that most of us use is folders. So in Dropbox, you have folders, subfolders, and files. In other note-taking apps like Notion or other apps like that, it's pages, subpages, and tasks within those subpages. The thing that makes that really inefficient is that it takes as much time to maintain the structure of your knowledge management system as it does to do your work. But the thing that makes Mem fundamentally different is that it's self-organizing. Your MEMS are more like nodes in a network, not nodes in a database. And that's probably the hardest thing to wrap your head around. But once it clicks, you start to really see the power of being able to organize information the way that you think, because everything at your fingertips, you reduce context shifts, you're able to make connections between your ideas, you're able to come up with hundreds of new ideas, and MEM really starts to evolve from a personal knowledge management system into a personal knowledge generation system. It's also one of the hardest things because it's incredibly counterintuitive because we've been taught to organize information in linear structures pretty much our entire lives. So the very first thing you're gonna see when you log into MEM for the first time is something called a timeline. And you'll see this little box here that says write anything. And the moment you start writing, you create a MEM. And you'll see here that if you scroll through the timeline, you have access to all the various MEMs that you've created. So it actually makes it really easy to find things as opposed to sifting through a bunch of folders. But we'll talk about some other ways to make things easy to find as well. But let's go into some of the basic formatting and functions inside of MEM. So in a lot of ways, MEM works like any other note-taking app or text editor. You have all the same formatting and function capabilities. So for example, we could change the size of this and make it an H1 tag, which just makes it bigger. If we wanted to, we could create a second heading and call this the second header. And then we could call this one the third header. And you basically get three different sizes. And then, of course, we can have regular text uh, as well as bullet points. So we could say the coolest things about MEM are... bi-directional links. And that's just one example. The other thing that you can do inside of each mem is you can add tasks. And anytime you add a task here and go to the left-hand sidebar and you click on your tasks, you'll see those tasks show up right there. So the really nice thing about that is no matter what you're working on, if a task occurs to you, you can just capture it and you won't forget it. And then finally, the other thing we can do inside of each mem is we can add links and tags. We can add links to other mems and we can add tags. So for example, I could call this video or maximize your output. And every other note that has that tag will show up right there. And obviously you can see I have a lot of different tags for maximize your output, but that makes it easy to find anything related to whatever is in this note. So that's how it evolves from being a sort of series of disconnected files and folders into an interconnected network of knowledge and insights and all the information that you need to do your work. The other thing we can do is we can add links from one mem to another. And these are called bi-directional links because when you link it to one note, it gets automatically linked to another. So let's just say I link the Maximize Your Output YouTube channel. And now I can just click on that. And if I go to the Maximize Your Output YouTube channel, you'll see here that it says it's referenced by the Beginner's Guide Formatting and Functions. So that's the basic overview of how you start creating your first mem. The next thing I want to share is the daily mem. The daily mem is something that automatically gets created based on the schedule that you set. And you can choose the time and day of the week that you want mem to create it, and it will automatically show up in your timeline. And the way that I like to use the daily mem is just as a brain dump to offload things that are on my mind. 
And you'll also see here that I've actually customized it with uh, a couple of my own prompts, and I'll show you how to do that when we get to the section on flows. But you can use the daily mem for pretty much anything you want to. It's really just a catch-all for your thoughts and everything that's on your mind. And I think it's really one of the, the coolest features of it is the fact that it's so flexible. And you can, again, use it as a gratitude journal. You can use it as a task list. You can use it just to free write or to journal or whatever you want to use it for. There's really no restriction to how you use it. Tags and links are how you make connections between MEMS and they're really the thing that sets Mem apart from any other note-taking app out there because it basically eliminates the need for folders. It makes things much easier to find and it enables you to retrieve information with almost no friction. So anytime you add a tag to a Mem and that tag is on other Mems, you will actually be able to retrieve all the other Mems with that tag. So you can see here that I have the tag landing page copy and now it will retrieve every other mem that has landing page copy. One common question that I get and one thing that confuses people is when you're supposed to use tags and when you're supposed to use links. And in my experience, I have found that it's best to use tags to categorize mems and links to connect ideas. And we'll talk a little bit more about what we mean by that. But the biggest problem with tags is that people use too many of them and they tend to tag information by topics or tag their notes by topics. And the problem with topics is that topics are infinite. Whereas if you tag your notes by category, then you're going to have a much easier time using tags and your tags will be a lot more useful. So that's just one example. Another, for example, so one of the things I like to do is capture information around the in, in internet. Sometimes when I come across different websites and you can see here, I have all these different things and I tag them as apps and tools of interest. So it's a really great way to categorize information and be able to retrieve it very quickly. So the other thing we can do is we can use MEMS bidirectional link feature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a project here. And so this is our beginner's guide to MEM project. And you'll see here that it has the tag projects. But the nice thing about this is that we can actually curate all the resources and uh, information we need to work on a project all on one page. So I could say a beginner's guide launch sequence, planning page for a beginner's guide. Well, it looks like I don't have a landing page here, but what you can see is that we can here. The other thing we could do is we could say, okay, let me, uh, you know, create a campaign email for beginner's guide launch. And we can also put all of our tasks that we want to complete for this project. We can say, you know, task one, publish video, record section three, whatever it is. And then whenever we go to our task view, as I mentioned earlier, those will all be right there inside of This is a really great way to basically have all the things you need to complete a project all in one place without having to constantly open a bunch of different files, uh, a bunch of different folders. The other way that we can use bidirectional links, let's say that we came across a quote on the web, for example, let's just use something like imagination is more important than knowledge. Now, there are two different ways that we could do this. We could just use a tag and say Albert Einstein, or what you could do is you could actually create a bidirectional link to Albert Einstein. And then anytime you have a reference to Albert Einstein or any quote from Albert Einstein or anything about Albert Einstein, they'll all be linked to this page. So you can start to build a topic page specifically about Albert Einstein. And this is probably the most powerful, but one of the most confusing things about using a network-based note-taking app like MEM. But once you get the hang of it, and once you have a critical mass of knowledge inside of MEM, you'll start to see how this makes it much easier to connect your ideas. So let me show you one example. So what you'll notice here is that I have taken a bunch of different bi-directional links and I've weaved them into sentences in another mem. So this is how it becomes really powerful when you wanna start combining mems and using your notes to write articles, to work on projects, everything. It really speeds up your workflow when you have access to bi-directional links and you use tags to organize information. So that's the basic overview of tags and bi-directional links.
So Mem Spotlight is probably one of my favorite features of Mem because it saves you a ton of time in terms of cutting and pasting and moving information back and forth. In fact, uh, you may have seen the case study that I did with my friend Chathan. If you haven't, you can uh, see that on the YouTube channel uh, where he said that just this one feature alone would reduce the amount of time that he was spending moving information back and forth by 40%. So let's look at a couple of examples of how this works. So the cool thing with Mem Spotlight is that you can capture text from anywhere on the internet or any app and bring it into Mem and then also paste text into any app from Mem to another app. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Seth Godin's blog really here. So let's just say that we wanted to grab this one little nugget here. If you want to create a remarkable service, you're simply going to have to trust your people and yourself. So what we're going to do is we're going to press command shift spacebar, and you'll see here that mem actually gives you the option to save the selection to a new mem, or we can send it to an existing mem. So if we send it to an existing mem, what I'm going to do is we're going to put it into beginner's guide to spotlight. And you see here that we have an option to preview it as well. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And what it'll do is it will actually save that quote with a link to the source. And if you give it just a second here, it should refresh. And there we go. So now we can bring quotes or text or anything from around the web directly into Mem. But let's say that we didn't want just this one piece of text, but we wanted the actual blog post. So we can use Spotlight to bookmark things inside of Mem which is another great way to use this. We can either save it to a new mem, or what we can do is we can send it to an existing mem. And when you send it to an existing mem, often what it'll do is it will actually give you the thumbnail. Sometimes it doesn't, it just depends on the website. Um, but you can see here, there we go. It basically gives us a thumbnail. And now we have this right here. So it's a great way to save things very quickly and not forget things that you wanna revisit, whether it's pieces of text or URLs that you find from around the web. But the other really amazing thing about Spotlight, and this is what saves you a ton of time. Often when we're doing things like writing emails to different people, we're actually just sending the same email over and over again with a few minor modifications. This is something that my friend Chasen learned when he was pitching journalists on his startup. So the other thing that Mem Spotlight is really great for is to cut and paste text into other note-taking apps or something like Grammarly really quickly. So this is something I often do. I write a blog post in Mem, but I want to be able to edit it in Grammarly and remove the bi-directional links because those bi-directional links are useless to one of my readers who is not inside of my Mem database. So let's just take you know one of these quotes. And if you see what comes up here, you'll notice that with just three keystrokes, we we're able to move this directly into Grammarly. And this becomes really useful. You can cut and paste things with three keystrokes to just about any app, including email. Sometimes it gets a bit finicky with Google Docs, which I just learned when I was trying to do this, but let's say I bring this four quadrants of time management. You can see here, it basically brings all of this directly into Grammarly and I can start working with it without having to cut and paste. So that's why Mem Spotlight is one of the most useful features. And you, know, you see here that we grab this link, but the other thing that happens is, let's just say that we wanted to bring a link from Seth's blog into a new Mem. We'll call this speeding up for the red light. And we save it to a new mem. And if we go to our inbox here, you'll see that it shows up right there. So Mem Spotlight is not only great for saving information from different sources, it's also great for moving information back and forth. And then the other thing that it's amazing for, and this is where I find it to be really valuable, is actually bringing information into MEMS with, from within MEM. So if I wanted to write an article, for example, I could say, knowledge management, and I can just start bringing text in like that. And I can start to bring different notes together to write an article really quickly. The final thing that I wanna go over is flows and imports. Flows let you create different types of templates that help you automate tasks where the content changes, but the process doesn't. So let's look at how we can create and apply flows. So if you open this left-hand sidebar here, you'll see a link here at the bottom for flows. And you have a couple of different options. You can configure your calendar and connect your Google Calendar to MEM. So that way, every time you have a meeting, you can automatically create a MEM for that meeting. 
You can set up text messages where if you enter your phone number here, Mem will send you a phone number or a confirmation code that you can use. And that way you can send text messages to yourself and capture ideas on the go when you are using Mem, because often we have ideas and thoughts uh, that come to us at random times when we're not in front of our computers. And this is really useful for that. And then the other thing we can do is we can forward emails to Mem. So if you have a, a Gmail inbox, what you can do is when you connect your Gmail inbox and you forward it or save it to mem.ai, then you can save things like travel itineraries or tasks or meeting requests or notes for meetings or things that people send you directly into mem. So that way you don't have to leave mem and keep going back to your inbox and context shift to find information that you're looking for. And then we also have templates in the daily mem. So let's talk about how to customize the daily mem. So you'll see here that you can set up which days that mem will generate a daily mem on you can specify the time but where it's great is actually right here in the text and you can see here that i actually customize this for a couple of different things what are my clear goals what's going well what are random insights thoughts and ideas that i have and then this is a question that i ask myself every day because i host the unmistakable creative podcast and i want to be thinking about okay what is it that we can do to reach a million listeners. It just allows you to prompt your brain, but you could use this as a gratitude journal, or as I said before, you can just make this a place where you brain dump whatever you want and you don't have to actually do any of this. But this is where you can customize the daily mem to be whatever you want it to be. So let's go back into flows here for a second and let's look at templates. So templates are a really great way to as I said, automate the process for things where the content might change, but the, pro the, the process doesn't actually change. You can use it for mental models and all sorts of other things. But where I tend to find it most useful is for metadata, particularly for things like book notes. But you can see here, I have a bunch of different templates. So let me show you a few of them. So one of the ones that I use pretty frequently is the new project because the thing is that this prevents you from having to actually type all of this stuff all over again every single time you launch a new project. So it tends to be a big time saver, especially if you have a specific way of organizing your projects or you have a specific format that you want to utilize. So let's go back to our beginner's guide to flows really quick here. And let me show you how these templates work. So. <clears throat> One example is for book notes. So when I'm taking book notes, I take what are called smart notes, literature notes. And at the end of every note, I have this same format, whatever related notes are, I have the tag literature notes, and then I have the source. And by creating a template for that metadata, I don't have to type this every single time. And it's a huge time saver. And if I wanted to, I could bring up a new project template. And you can see here that this brings up all the data that I need or all the various components that I need for my new project. And you can use this, as I said, for a bunch of different things. You can see here, I have a book notes template, a course launch checklist template, a course module template. You can see it basically just gives me key ideas, student exercise and resources. So that's the cool thing about templates is that you can use them to, as I said, automate the process for anything where the content changes, but the basic process doesn't, or the basic structure doesn't change. And that is a basic overview of how you get started with Mem for Beginners. Hopefully you found this video useful. As always, please feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, be sure to check out our free new course on how to take smart notes.